Converting a bus just like starting or running a homestead is not linear. Both endeavors often leave you with many little projects to complete at the same time. We have been lucky to have a few very sunny, warm afternoons this week, and this has made me want to venture out into my garden again as I get a glimpse into spring. This winter has been very dry compared to our last couple in the valley. You can see the endless yellow hills in our view, and the gardens have definitely been showing slow growth with a limited moisture. In fact, a lot of the soil is really dry. To prepare the beds for abundant spring crops, I am beginning to be more vigilant about watering them regularly, adding some fresh compost with plantings and a bit of seaweed fertilizer to help boost the life in the soil prior to the warmer days. With only a month left of winter, I feel like I need to start getting ready for spring and it's been such a strange winter season in the garden because I've been honestly neglectful of what's going on between the really dry winter and then just the thought of not being here over summertime has really made me kind of take a step back from the garden which honestly makes me feel really sad. Uh, I love my garden. I've really enjoyed cultivating it from absolutely nothing, planting seeds and seeing them turn into food. But being in this kind of transition phase of our life, knowing that we need to finish converting our bus so we can go on our big trip at the end of the year and see other people's homesteads has made me feel a little bit unstable in our life here at the moment. We don't have any more livestock. Our gardens are really slow because it's winter and I understand that. But also I wasn't even sure if we would be here come springtime and summertime. So I haven't really wanted to plant seeds, which to me are really valuable and not know whether I would be able to harvest them or not. I did end up planting my garlic, which I'm really glad that I did but it's in dire need of water and fertilizer. I've planted things here and there, mainly potatoes and onions or even perennials. And all the cabbage and the bok choy that I've planted, once we started bringing all the fences down around the property because we were like, yes, no chickens, we can free up the gardens. The wallabies and the wombats decided to come over and eat those for themselves, which, I mean, I'm kind of upset about, but at the same time, it's not like I was really looking after them anyways. We have been getting a lot of deliveries for our bus this last month, from gas fitting supplies to shower bases, the list goes on, as a lot of these items are hard to find in our little rural area. But at least this means lots of cardboard boxes to smother the weeds in the garden and give me a fresh base to plant in too soon. brought a bed over for the boys so they could be more comfy. You gonna come up here, Ty? Come on, in your bed. In your bed, you guys gonna have to get used to it. Yeah. Lie down. You won't be able to stick your head up that much. Yeah. That's so comfy. That's gonna be your future bed. It is. As I mentioned earlier, this week we are tackling many small and large projects for the bus simultaneously. I spend my weekend insulating the walls of the bus, which will have studs added to them later on and eventually be covered by wool. I'm no expert on insulation, but the gist of it is that you want no gaps, which would let air in, and you want to compress the insulation as little as possible. I've also learned that the R rating of insulation refers to the thickness, with thicker being better insulation. However, if you only have a small space, you only need so much insulation, so you are going to get a smaller R rating. Luckily, the secondhand insulation that we bought earlier on fits perfectly into the wall cavities, and it might still allow us to put another layer of insulation in once the studs go up.
Insulation is all done and I'm so excited. Of course, I haven't done the ceiling yet because um, that's gonna be a little bit trickier with the boys putting wires in, but all the walls are done on either side. And that means that the next step will probably be to put the walls in. I gave this whole space a bit of a clean as well. So it's easy to work in um, when the boys get in here later on. Um, and yes, ta-da. A lot of people either dislike or are unsure of how to cook eggplant, but I want to share a really quick and delicious recipe from my family to yours to take the fear away. The trick with eggplant is to remove the liquid from it if you can, as this can sometimes be bitter. It also seems to cook much better with high heat, so cook it either directly over coals or fire, or on a very high sear in a cast iron pan. I start off by cutting it into centimeter long rounds, and then I sprinkle it with salt, which is going to help to draw out the moisture. These don't really have a name, maybe you can suggest one in the comments, but they have always been my favorite appetizer during Christmas dinner in our house, and now are a quick and easy snack left in the fridge for between meals for Sam and I. In our last video, you watched the boys and I put up our ceiling studs in the bus. This is going to be what we eventually screw the plywood to so that we've got our ceilings. Earlier this week, we got a huge order of plywood as well as some timbers that are nice and straight for our walls. Sam and I were supposed to plane down some secondhand timbers just like we did last time, but unfortunately our thickness of belt broke and so while we wait for a replacement, we had to use what we could. And I know this seems strange, but hear me out. What I love about problems arising is that it's in our human nature to problem solve and come up with resourceful solutions. So although we had a few problems this week, we did come up with a few smart solutions. For example, when we didn't have enough wood and we needed more, we used the long pallet that we had just sitting around on, on our property, cut it down and use that for wall studs as well. It ended up being the perfect thickness and felt so much better knowing that it was secondhand. Lucky Sam is somewhat of an expert at breaking these down. Sam's task on this day was to connect all the tanks together and fill them to test that the water moves correctly through the tanks. All right, exciting moment. We're going to fill the tanks with water and I get to find out uh, if they work, if I've balanced them right. So I've got three tanks. Um, the one in the middle is the one that I'm gonna be filling and then it's gonna balance between them. Um, so what I'm looking for is my intake just here. What I'm looking for is um, the air to escape through the ventilation that I've created. Because if I start filling this with water and I'm getting air having to come back through this pipe, it means I've done something wrong. So, wish me luck. All right, so we can see the intake is just here. That's where I'm gonna be cutting the hole. So I kinda of wanna fill at that height. Seems to be just filling. This is exciting. Yeah, no bubbles, no bubbles coming out. That is very exciting. Let's do a leak check and then open the end and then 
what needs to happen. I'll um, get Dai to hold this end closed so that there's no air here. Um, so what I need you to do is block this up with your hand as airtight as possible, as if you don't want anything to get out. Squeeze it together. No, 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 just like put your hand over it. Oh, okay. Nothing's gonna squirt out at me, right? No. It's not a prank? No, it's not a prank. <laughs> if only. Oh, good. Um, and then I'm gonna open the other end, and if we get a clear stream of water just coming straight out with no bubbles, no, no friction or anything, then we're winning. We're doing well. I also got to make sure that water actually went to the other tanks too, that'll be it. And from what I heard of his discussions, I'm pretty sure it was a success. We're doing lots of different jobs this week and I'm helping Joe out with putting some of the studs into the walls. We're using both timbers that we got delivered. Our day's jobs ended up coming to a standstill though, once we used what we could of the pallet wood and the wood that we had. Isn't it funny that life often adds a roadblock right before it presents you with opportunity? After coming to a standstill the other day, we ended up going into town for groceries and to pick up some deliveries, and one of those deliveries was the replacement belt for our thickness saw. It actually ended up arriving almost a week and a half early. Getting the thickness saw fixed again means we will be able to even out more secondhand timbers and be able to finish off the framing for the walls. If there is one thing this week has taught me, it is to appreciate how far we have really come. We don't need to make huge, drastic changes or progress faster than we can. And when life's roller coaster feels like it is hitting rock bottom, the climb up is just around the corner. So it turns out the thickness had let us down again. Uh, a bolt or something flew out at me and we're just scared to push it any further than we need to. Usually those kinds of machines are only meant to be used for small bits of wood so you're not doing it as much. <laughs> so we just don't think it can handle the job that we've got. We're determined to push through though and instead of letting this stop us for another week or two or whatever, we're gonna go get some pallet wood. We're gonna break some apart and hopefully use that as studs. We do want to find pallets that are 19 mil thick though. So we're gonna go have a look and fingers crossed, we'll be able to get some walls in soon. We've had another look at these pallets and we think we could get away with using this wood. It may just work because it's a little bit thinner than what we had, especially cause our walls kind of curve in. So thank you pig pen and sheep pen now you're going to have a new purpose on our bus. We're going to get to work breaking these down and hopefully we have enough that it's going to cover the distance that we need in the bus. Just this pallet alone potentially has 15 meters worth of wood. So we're hoping for the best here. I can't get them all. So you want to get the nail right on the edge of here. That's what Why do you make things so easy? Oh my god. It's teamwork, baby. Nah, that one's just hard. Yeah. I just want to be careful. to do these ones here, I think. As studs for the window, these butt perfectly and I, they sit perfectly between the windows as well. So we're actually gonna be able to use pallet wood for these studs, which is really exciting because I thought I was gonna to have to rip timber down to make it fit. Thank you as always for your company and support. 
Make sure to tune in next week as we will finally be getting our walls up and be getting onto the roof to install our solar panels. So much potential. Mm.